Hi guys, this is Jerry Brewer of East Bay Hitting Instruction, and um, today I want to talk about the hands and the shoulders and, the, and their importance in the swing. And so what I'm going to do is reference this video by Don Slot. Don Slot's a creator of Ivy Pro. He's done a lot of cool stuff. His software is really good. Um, but I want to reference his one video today where he talks about how the hitter's hands and elbows need to become independent of their shoulders and hips so the back elbow can initiate the swing. And I'm going to talk about what I, I do and don't like about this, this swing thought. And so what I'm concerned about by focusing too much on the hands and getting them independent of the shoulders is that we can get this uh, hunched over shoulder look where both shoulders are just kind of in and just um, not retracted, not back, not proud as I like to say and just a, not a very good looking move. And We're going to look at some hitters and, and see how they're different but I really want to reference this, uh, this position right here where we want to avoid getting our shoulders rolled over. So what I'm going to do first is show this Vladimir Guerrero clip when he was really new in the league, still at the Montreal Expos. And I'm going to show it because he, he does this movement, his magnitude of this movement is very big, um, so it's very easy to see. I'm going to show that other hitters do these movements, but maybe not quite to the magnitude of Guerrero. And for one thing, Guerrero is a smaller guy, so it's a little easier to see. But as we move through this, we can really see that he's really engaging this rear shoulder. Really, really getting the shoulder back and scooped or pinched or however you want to say it. Even to the point where he's got an indention right here. And from here, he's just going to turn his, his shoulders. He's just going to hang on to that retraction, hang on to that, that holding that shoulder and just turn that left shoulder back. And we can really see this as I go forward. As the bat's moving forward, the left shoulder's moving forward. The left shoulder is pulling the bat through. His shoulder rotation is turning the bat. You know, the hands are not independent of the shoulders at all. The hands aren't driving the shoulders. Um, this turning of the shoulders movement, even this movement right here where he retracts his shoulder, this is an upper back and lats move. It's a move that's done in the back. It's an adduction of the shoulder. It can't be done with the hands. Um, it can't be done with the arms and certainly can't be done with the, the rear elbow. So what we're seeing here is that even right here we can see more of that left side of his jersey and his rear elbow isn't really initiating the swing. I, it's, you could definitely argue that he's getting this elbow, uh, this elbow retracted, scooped, and turning the shoulders. So let's take a look at another hitter. Here's Albert Pools. Albert Pools has a lot more muscular up in the shoulders, so it's going to be a little bit more difficult to see, but we're going to see the same movements. And so here he is, and I want to see right here, if you can look on this a little bit, see how the creases are going away from the spot, kind of a shadow right here. He's, uh, he's got his shoulder blade up against his jersey right here. And as we move forward, right there, he's lost all the creases. And what he's done there is he's pulled that shoulder blade into his body. He's retracted that shoulder. That's, that's a shoulder move. This is a, a shoulder shrug, if you will. He's getting that back. You can really see how the S kind of juts out at us. So he's getting his shoulder back and in. And at the same time, the elbow is going to start to drop, but it's really as a function of the shoulder. And the hands aren't doing much. And right here, we see the elbow drops, but look at that front shoulder. Um, that, that rear elbow is not independent of the shoulders. That's, just, that's all there is to it. Um, it is following that left shoulder. So we're going to look at some other hitters and, and see if we see the same thing. So I'm going to fire up my software and we're going to look at, whoa, sorry about that, at um, three hitters. And we're going to look at first at Josh Hamilton. So Josh is taking off in his swing right here. Now this is kind of failing me. Anyway, and right here we can see that he's doing the, the retraction in that rear shoulder, really getting that shoulder in. The, the hands aren't doing much. They're, they're, they're being moved by the upper back and the, and the shoulder here. And they're holding this retraction. You can see the elbow is down here, but the rear shoulder is still back a little bit. And, and why is this important? Look at the stretch. He's got this the front side open and the rear shoulder back still, so he's creating a huge stretch. And that's the, that's what about the front shoulder? Well here is the movement where the hands get blurry, where we really see the bat take off. And what's happening with that front shoulder? 
it's going back and around. Uh, uh, absolutely, it's, it's being shrugged, it's being retracted. And um, that is an upper body movement. The hands cannot do that. Um, if you just sit in a chair and just hold your hands out in front of your elbows out and turn, that's using your upper back. That's just um, all there is to it. So his hands are controlling this movement, and, and really it makes sense. He's not losing. He's not. His front elbow isn't changing any. The angle in it is really staying the same. If anything, it's losing flexion. It's getting a little more straight here because we see that his rear shoulder is holding this bat back, and the front shoulder is coming around. He's taking the slack out of out of the front arm. So let's take a look at another hitter and see if we see the same thing. Buster Posey, right here, he's getting that shoulder back and in. Rear elbow is dropping, but the shoulder is not coming forward. You know, it, it's holding back, it's retracted. It has tension in the rear shoulder. And as we see here, let's watch that rear elbow and that rear shoulder. Uh, are they really independent? It looks to me like they're moving at the same, same rate. I really think that rear shoulder is tucking in and then the left shoulder is starting to come around. I see a lot of connection there between the shoulder, elbow, and the hands moving around. And let's look at this. Look at the flexion he has in that front elbow. And he holds it back with the rear, rear arm, rear shoulder, and as the left shoulder starts to come around, we lose that slack. We lose that slack. And then he just pulls that left shoulder around, turning the shoulders. The last one I want to show is Chase Utley, and this one's really good because we shot from a little bit of a forward angle. We can see something, and we can really see as Chase draws that rear shoulder back, and there's the elbow dropping in, shoulders retracting, retracting the shoulders, shoulders not coming forward, it's holding back. Right there, that left shoulder really is... Uh, it's retracting, it's turning, pulling that hands and that bat around. Let's, let's watch the, the angle of the elbow. Bent and losing all the slack right there. We're going to start. Look at that movement right there from here to here. Is the hands driving that? Nah, no, no, it's not. So why is this important? Why is it important to focus on the shoulder turn? Well, let's take a look from the rear view of pool holes again. And what we can see is that he is really doing a lot of movement before the bat goes forward. He's done all this movement and the bat is not moving forward. Look at this. Um, he went from a, a jersey with no creases in it to a lot of creases right here. He's moved his legs a lot and now he's moving his shoulders a lot. He's allowing a lot of his body to work before the bat does. And just to make an analogy of this, um, think about a car. Say you have a car and you, your, your goal is to drag a, a basketball. So you get a piece of rope and you attach it to the basketball, attach it to your car, and you get the, the, car nice and, the rope nice and taut with your car and you take off. What happens? Well, the ball immediately goes. It goes at the same speed, accelerates the same, uh, same rate as the car. Well, what if we do the same thing again and just back up the car a little bit? Give the ball a little bit of slack. And then you take off with the car. The ball doesn't go anywhere. But when the slack gets taken out, the ball accelerates very quickly. It, um, it has the same speed as the car now, just like in the first case, but its acceleration is a lot faster. And that's really important in baseball. We want to take all the slack out and get a lot of the body moving before the bat does. And we can really see here, the legs are opening and the left shoulder is opening. It's, it's the same movement. The, the, the hip and the, and the rear shoulder are actually pretty similar, both ball and socket joints. We can really see the left, the left hip is being pulled back, is opening up, and so is the left shoulder. And so, this, this concept is very similar to a movement you see in a lot of other sports, um, a, a boxer. You know, a boxer is going to retract that rear shoulder and then turn his entire body. You know, what, what is a boxer's goal is to extend his hands, is to punch, you know, similar to a baseball bat, you know, throw the arms out. But if you look at a boxer from the rear view, they have massive shoulders, massive lats, and it's because these muscles are very strong. You know, here at pull holes is engaging these lats, and that's a very strong muscle. We want to do that. Um, what about swimming? Do you want to have independent hands of your shoulders? Uh, certainly not. Um, how about a shot put? You know, definitely not. You put the, the ball up against your ear, you retract that shoulder, spin, and then at the very last moment, you're, you're going to throw it. Same thing with a hammer throw. Try, uh, try throwing a hammer 
you know, with your hands independent of your shoulders. It's not going to work. Um, how about a power clean? You know, there's four movements in the power clean. There's the, the first pull with the legs, there's a the scoop with the lower back, there's a the second pull with the shoulders, and then there's a catch with the arms. You know, if you try to, to get your arms independent of your shoulders, you know, good luck with that. It's just not going to work. So these are, these are movements that are very consistent. Um, we see them in a lot of sports. How about pitching? Pitching is a great example. Um, here I have a picture of Tim Lincecum. And this is very similar to the Vladimir Guerrero where because Lincecum is a smaller guy, we see the magnitude of the movement is exaggerated. Um, you can really see what I'm talking about here with this retraction of the shoulders. He um, He's getting the rear arm back, the retraction of that rear shoulder, stretching this body. And at the same time, his front side is really opening up. The left hip is way open, and the left side is way open on the front side, on the front side really getting the shoulder out and around, stretching this, this upper body, stretching from here to here, stretching from here to here. Really powerful movement. So just like the car, he's taking all the slack out, and that ball's going to whip through. So I'm saying this exact same thing is happening in hitting. It's more difficult to see because we can't separate our hands, but it is happening. So let's, let's just go back a little bit. So keep in mind this shoulder angle, how he has it back, and this one's ret uh, retracting and getting, we can draw a line straight across and then down just a little bit. Compare that to what we see in our example shoulder extraction or, or losing our, our tension in the shoulders and that rear shoulders is just, just down and around and just, just think about this position a little bit think about pulling this rear shoulder back a little bit what would that do it would stretch all this muscle through here and we're going to get that whip effect what if he pulls this rear this front shoulder back a little bit and takes the slack out of this arm what is that going to do uh, it's going to create a stretch this way creating a lot more muscle stretch to get that, that big whip effect. So we can do the same thing Tim Lincecum's doing, the same thing that Chase Utley's doing, Josh Hamilton, and really creating that big stretch and powerful movement. So this is an important move. This is kind of a, kind of a, I feel a last step, kind of a, something that, that separates a really good swing and an elite swing is, is, is the function of these shoulders. Just that half a frame of just giving a little more time for the legs and the shoulders to work before the hands come through. And it, it, you can even, the same analogy on the car where we want to go through our gears. Our, our legs are our first gear, our shoulders are our second gear, and finally getting to our third gear with our hands. If we just try to, to punch in the third gear before we've, we've gone through all the gears, this is not going to work. We're not going to get as much power. So I feel this is what's happening. And um, I want to get the, the hitter's shoulders back and proud. I, I say take pride in your hitting. I want it, the shoulders back. And um, that's what I wanted to get out today. So send me your thoughts to hear them. And until then, work on these movements and take pride in your hitting.